What's up everyone and welcome to the AB Fitness Center show uh, where we help people just like you look and feel better while achieving long-term results. My name is Anthony Bevilacqua. I am the owner and operator of AB Fitness Center and today we're going to talk about the five baby steps to help anyone at any level get into amazing shape. So if you're listening to this for the first time, if you're listening to this on a podcast, or you're watching this live on my Facebook, or you're watching this on YouTube, just make sure that you like, subscribe, hit the share button, because all that stuff helps all these videos get out there. So let's begin, okay? Five baby steps. So baby steps, the reason why I chose the word baby steps instead of easy steps is because I, I want you guys to understand that this is simple stuff, all right? And we're going to get into this. It's not going to be hard. Anyone can do this to get into amazing shape. So the first step that everyone needs to do is you need to one, practice flexible dieting and two, you need to count your calories. So that's a part you know, step one, A and B. <laughs> All right. So you have to have an idea of how many calories you're taking in. So I was on the phone with someone yesterday doing a virtual consult and we were discussing their goals. We were discussing, you know, uh, what shape she wanted to get into and just just her goals right and on that call you know I asked you know how do you have any idea how many calories you're taking in oh I probably am taking in around 1200 okay so what are you eating on a full day so when we went through everything we actually you know tracked how many calories she was taking in it was way over where she should have been way over I think it ended up being like 18 or 1900 calories but Simple fact of the matter is not many people actually understand how many calories are actually in certain things. So this is why using something like MyFitnessPal and tracking your calories and understanding how many you're actually taking in will leave you leagues beyond everybody else when it comes to getting into good shape. So you have to know how many calories you're consuming. You have to know how many grams of protein. You have to be aware of this stuff. So for example, this weekend, you know, it was 4th of July weekend, so we had like a little party, a barbecue, and I wanted, everyone was drinking, so I had some drinks with everybody else, and I was able to fit all that stuff in because I understand flexible dieting, which means I can eat kind of whatever I want, but I understand it's more like a budget. So I understand, okay, if I'm supposed to have whatever, 1,200 calories a day, let's just say that's my number, if I want, you know, to have 200 calories in alcohol or 200 calories in chips, I can have that. I just have to allot to having it, in my, having it in my budget. And like I said, most people are just so unaware of how many calories they're taking in. Oh, I barely ate anything today. You know how many times a day I hear that? And then when you go to actually, okay, what'd you eat? Again, there's another client had an issue this weekend. They ended up gaining a little bit of weight. So what happened? What'd you end up eating this weekend? Oh, I barely ate. I was, I was busy all morning and then I had like a lunch and I had dinner. Okay, well, what'd you eat? Again, plugging it in and actually seeing the numbers and using something like my fitness pal ended up that you were over 500 calories each day. That's an extra thousand calories a week, just in two days. So this is why it's good. And this is why it's one of my baby steps. You have to understand how many calories are in the things that you are eating. You can't just wing it. You can't just guess. Because one, numbers don't lie. Numbers do not lie. You can't make up numbers. If, you, if you're supposed to have 1,200 calories and you're eating 15, you're 300 calories over. That's simple. But it makes it much more understandable when sometimes people get frustrated. Like my client yesterday, like I said, you know, I don't understand why, why I had a bed weighing today. Well, you had 1,000 calories over in two days. So this is why it's important to track and log and practice flexible dieting. So flexible dieting means you can kind of eat whatever you want as long as you fit it into your allotted budget of protein, carbs, fats, and calories. So that's baby step number one. Baby step number two is you want to eat more protein and you want to make sure that you eat it first. Okay, protein is essential. I've talked this up so much, but protein is essential when it comes to changing the way your body looks, getting stronger, and getting healthier. Protein is essential. Now, most people don't get enough protein to actually change the way they look. So you have to make sure that you're eating protein first and you have to make sure that that is the base of your meal. So when you eat protein, your body has to heat up a little bit to burn that extra protein off. So for every 100 calories of protein that you consume, your body basically burns off 30 of them just digesting it. So what that means is you get a calorie burning effect from having protein 
And the reason why I'm telling you to eat it first in your meal is because it will keep you fuller longer. So one of the tactics that I tell some of our clients are, is if you're gonna go out to eat, or if you're gonna go to a party or an event, try to have a protein shake right, right before you walk in, because that protein will, obviously you have to burn some calories to burn off that protein, but that protein will take a little bit longer to digest, and it will make you fuller going into the party or going into you know whatever event that you're going into, so you're less likely to overeat. So this is why, you know, when it comes to try getting into the best shape ever, it's all about managing your hunger. And I've talked about this in other videos. Hunger is not necessarily a bad thing. Hunger is a good thing. It's your body telling you like, hey, I'm going to tap into some fat stores. But you have to make sure that, again, you're utilizing and eating enough protein because, again, protein is the building blocks for muscle. So without enough protein, you're not going to have enough raw material to help rebuild and repair muscles which will make you look better which will make you feel better which will make you stronger so again always make sure this is why it's baby step number two you have to make sure that you're consuming more protein and you have to make sure that you are consuming it first in your meal all right it's just again my second baby step i think it's one of the most important ones also so let's move into number three baby step number three stop looking you right there you listening Stop looking for quick fixes and focus on lifestyle. Fitness is not a sprint, it is a marathon. So it, this is something that you will have to continue for a long time. Fitness is part of your routine. And again, I've told you all of this several, several times before. Fitness has to be like brushing your teeth. You brush your teeth every day, doesn't matter how much stress you're under, doesn't matter what's going on in your life, you manage to brush your teeth and keep them nice and clean. It's the same thing with your body. If you don't take care of your body every day, you're gonna get crap out. So you wanna make sure that you're taking care of your body every day and stop looking at all these things that are out there as a quick fix. You know, it's easy to be on Instagram and you see someone doing something and you're like, oh my God, this must be the reason why. Or, oh, my friend, is on keto and she lost X amount of weight, so that means that I need to go on keto too. But the simple fact of the matter is, maybe she did, but maybe she was way overeating before that. Because again, going back to baby step number one, maybe your friend doesn't have any idea how many calories she was taking in before. Also, you don't know if the keto diet's gonna work for you. It might not. So stop looking for quick fixes and think long term. This is why, again, going back to what I said in step number one, practicing flexible dieting, making sure that you're flexible in your food choices and not eliminating foods is what's going to make this more of a long-term manageable thing for you. So again, for me, like I said, on the 4th of July, uh, everyone was having drinks or whatever. So I wanted some drinks. So I was able to fit that in. And it, it's like I said, I, I made progress through the weekend. I didn't lose an ounce of progress because I had drinks. Whereas if I was on keto, I would have technically went off my diet because of the alcohol. So we don't want that. So again, like I said, stop looking for quick fixes. Stop looking for the next best thing and just focus on making it a lifestyle. Focus on, you know, exercising every day. Focus on eating better every day. Focus on eating more protein. Focus on downloading my fitness pal or any other app and start tracking your calories and make those long-term habits because those long-term habits are gonna be the thing that's gonna separate you 30 days from now, 60 days from now. Because a lot of you are gonna to listen to this and not take action on anything that I'm saying. But the simple fact of the matter is that if you did 30 days from now, you're gonna be a brand new person, I promise. And again, this is a journey, okay? It's a marathon, not a sprint. And you're gonna have ups and downs along the way, but the key is, is that you just stay consistent and you learn from the mistakes that you may make along the way and whatever happens, all right? So that was number three. Number four, and this is one that I live by all the time, look for lower calorie options of everything that you eat all the time. So always be looking to swap out something that you're eating for something that could be better. So for example, uh, let's use like going out to eat. So let's say I'm going out to eat. I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking fast food when I'm thinking this, but let's say you're going out to eat. Okay, so for example, perfect example. So my brother-in-law's birthday was the other day, so we went to an Italian restaurant to eat. So again, what do you get at an Italian restaurant? There's fried foods, fried meats, pastas, pizzas, this, 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 this. 
And yes, I could have that stuff if I fit it in because I practice flexible dieting and I count my calories. But in a simple fact of the matter is if I save and I pick lower calorie options all the time, I have more food throughout the day. So what I did was instead of having a chicken cutlet Parmesan hero, I basically said, okay, I want grilled chicken, I want lettuce, and I'll have it on a hero. And that's what I ate. So you always got to be looking for a lower calorie option of things all the time. Going back to what I said earlier, you know, this weekend we had a 4th of July party and everybody was, you know, drinking. I had drinks with everybody else, but I chose lower calorie options. So my drink was uh, two ounces of tequila and I had four ounces of diet cranberry juice. Okay. It was available. So that means that my drink was probably around 150 calories. I don't remember off my head. Whereas my friends who were also drinking the same drink, but not didn't want to use the diet one, each drink that they had, had like 400 calories. So I was able to save 300 calories and I, I was still able to enjoy myself. But this is what I'm saying. This has to be lifestyle. This has to be thinking long-term. You always got to look for that lower calorie option. You, you can't, it can't never, it's not that you can't have those things, but you want to always look for those lower calorie options because it'll allow you more flexibility in your day. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, and it reminds me, I always, every time I talk to people about this, look for lower calorie options, I always think there was a book a couple of years ago and it was like, um, eat this, not that. <laughs> and so I had like, um, McDonald's hamburger versus a different McDonald's hamburger. And it would always show like, eat this one because it was lower in this and this. So you got to always, every time you go anywhere, think, okay, how can I make this better? Again, if you're thinking long-term, you'll do that all the time. And we always think about how many calories where, uh, you know, how much progress we're making right now. Okay. I only lost this much, but think about it this way. If you didn't do any of these steps, how many pounds would you actually gain? And it happens all the time to people. You know, you have to think that you're kind of warding off all these extra calories you would have consumed if you didn't follow my baby steps. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. So number five, my fifth baby step, stop doing cardio and cardio based workouts and focus on progression. So going back to what I said earlier, muscle is really the only thing that burns body fat and will help you change the way you look. So in order to actually physically change shape, you want to be able to build a little bit of muscle because that's going to alter the way you look. It's going to alter your body composition, your fat to muscle ratio. So when you do cardio based workouts, they're almost like a band aid. So if I did a cardio workout today and I burned 300 calories, well, that's good. I burned 300 calories, but that means that in order for me to, I have to do that every single time in order for me to keep up with that. Whereas if you focus on building muscle, you will actually change and alter the way you look because now you're burning more calories at rest and your body's going to, that body composition level is going to alter with cardio. That body composition level doesn't alter. Maybe you'll lose a little bit of fat, but you will not be gaining any muscle. So hopefully that makes sense. So a lot of people, again, and I don't want to name names here, but there's a lot of uh, boot camp type places that have been putting their live workouts on. And I happened to just click on one the other day and it was the most gimmicky workout I've ever seen in my life. They were having people on the floor and like doing this and jumping up and down. And it's just like that. Yeah, you're going to feel that workout because it's hard. You're jumping around, you're heat, you're sweating, you're, you're breathing heavy. And that's good. I mean, it's better than doing nothing. But is that the best bang for your time? Is that the best investment in your time? Whereas if you did a half hour of progressed science based training where you're actually working on muscles, is that 30 minutes going to be better because now you're investing in changing the way you look. And remember the goal is, is you want to look and feel better. So if you want to look and feel better, you have to do things and make investments every day that are going to be the thing that's going to change the way you look instead of just a temporary bandit. Okay. I burned 500 calories today. Okay, great. But that doesn't solve the problem. All right. So I'll recap everything again. But while before I recap it, I want you guys to comment below and let me know out of the five that I went over, how many of them you're actually following right now. So I should see a whole bunch of things on the screen right now. How many of the five you're actually following? All right, but let's recap them. So one, 
You want to practice flexible dieting and you want to be able to count your calories. Okay, they go hand in hand. You can eat whatever you want, but you got to know how many calories you're taking in. If you're eating food and you're not sure how many calories it is, use that thing, the Google machine. Okay, and you literally just type in, okay, I'm eating this and it'll tell you how much calories it is and just be consistent with how many numbers that you're using. All right, baby step number two, you want to eat more protein and you want to make sure you eat it first. Okay, eating more protein will help keep you full along, will help burn extra calories, and will give your body the building blocks it needs to build more muscle, which will change the way you look. Number three, you want to stop looking for quick fixes, and you want to think long term. You also kind of want to put your blinders on a little bit when you do this, and you don't want to focus on what this person's doing and what that person's doing, because it'll just distract you from thinking long term. So think long term, okay? Number four, you want to look for lower calorie options of everything that you eat all the time before you sit down and eat it. How can I make this meal better? What can I do to make this lower? What can I do to alter this? And it's okay if you're out at a restaurant or out at a barbecue to alter everything you're eating. You know, many times I hear people say, oh, I'm at a barbecue and they only had hamburgers. Okay, so maybe don't eat the bun or maybe eat only half. You're allowed to to change things, okay? There's no, you're not, you know, no one's gonna rip your head off because uh, you didn't eat the buns off my hamburger. People will give you crazy looks because that no one does that, but that's what's gonna be the difference between the way you look now and the way you looked three months ago, all right? Number five, you wanna stop doing cardio-based workouts and focus on long-term progression in order to build muscle and alter that body fat to muscle ratio that you're having right now. All right, so hopefully my five baby steps tips can help you change the way you look and get into amazing shape. If you guys like this video, please make sure you like it, comment it, share it, do all those crazy things because it does help us to get more people out there. And also make sure you comment below and let me know how many of the five that you're actually following right now. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time today and I'll catch you guys on the next one.